Say knockouts back. Knockouts back. That's what all these fans be saying. I bring knockouts back. <laughs> anyway, this is the uh, after fight afterthought for the Amir Khan Danny Garcia fight. And in this video, I go over the before, the during, and the after uh, fight over with both fighters. And I start with the winner, which is the after fight, and then I'll proceed to the afterthought and uh, give a little bit of a round by round in there as well. If you have not seen this fight, shut this off now. Go watch the fight. I don't want to do any spoiler things or anything, okay? Did they shut him off, Aguardo? You think they're gone now? We can start? Okay. All right, check it out. First, we'll start out with the winner of the fight, uh, Danny Garcia. You know, coming into this fight, you know, this is a golden opportunity for him. Not only did he just win the... Was it the WBA? Yeah, it was one of the... It was either WBA or WBC. It's too early in the morning for me to remember right now. But now he has an opportunity to win two belts. He could be the WBA and the WBC holders. It was WBC, wasn't it, with Morales? Yeah. And uh, will he be able to handle that type of pressure? I mean, that's that's a lot going into this fight. A lot more than going in against Morales was. Uh, Stamina is going to be a question for him. Coming in there, is he going to be able to keep up the pace that he's going to need? You know, to uh, keep up with a guy like Khan? Uh, he still shows some inexperience throwing the wide punches and things like that. And a more experienced fighter will be able to take advantage of those things. He's a good all-around fighter, though. And he's a good counterpuncher. So he's always got those in there. And obviously, looking in this fight, if he wins, you've got to be looking at it like a unification-unification fight with Juan Manuel Marquez. Even though Marquez wants another shot at Pacquiao. Everybody wants to fight Pacquiao. I would for, you know, a couple million dollars, but nobody's going to pay me that to get beat up. In the ring. Anyway, <laughs> you know, if he loses and looks good, he's only 24, and he's still going to be able to fight the top fighters. He's only 24. If he loses bad, then they're going to start looking at, well, Morales was overweight, and then they're going to start questioning the credibility of the Nate Campbell fight, the Ken, uh, Kendall Holt fights, and things like that. Going over to the afterthought, you have Amir Khan. He's looking for justification. He lost his last fight. Uh, under some a serious cloud where the other fighter uh, tested positive for steroids afterward and uh, later down the road and actually admitted to taking the steroids before he even fought him. So they went back and they stripped the guy of the title, Peterson, and gave the title back to Khan. So when you look, look at that, will he have a lapse? His revenge factor for the fight, for his training camp, for all that stuff that was going into it, that buildup is gone. But a new one comes in, and the fact that he has his title back, and he's going to be able to... Go get, they haven't changed the fight, though. It's still down as a loss. They haven't... <laughs> I don't know how you can not change that and make it a no contest. And anyway, you know, so with that, you know, it's a new challenge for him. He gets to unify the WBC and WBA titles. If he wins, obviously he's looking at a Juan Manuel Marquez fight or a possible move up to 147. If he loses, you're starting to talk about, well, it's kind of like two straight, you know, even if you throw out the steroid thing. Almost elite, but he loses to all the top, top fighters he's fought. You know, when you start looking at his record, who he's beat, and things like that. You know, if he loses badly... You know, it's it was the matchups. He fought an old Judah. He, you know, McCloskey wasn't that. You know, they're gonna start questioning all that stuff and say, was he built built up? Which is what the Garcia camp's been screaming since day one. Well, anyway, let's go into the fight. There it starts out with a nice pace. Starts out fast for Khan. You know, Garcia is more of a one punch guy right now. Khan's throwing combos in there. Uh, you know. Garcia's trying to work the body, you know, the speed is obviously evident. Low blow by Garcia. It was a solid round for Khan, and I gave it a 10-9 for Khan. Going in the second round, you know, you can already see some swelling on Garcia's uh, around his eye. You know, another fast start for Khan. Khan's landing the combos, some counters starting to land for Garcia there. Speed is still very evident. 
Now Garcia's going to the body. And then Khan will counter with or counter with combos. Uh, it's kinda hard to do. You know, and then but he's landing those right hands with a bit more regularity in the in the round. But again, it's a solid round for Khan. And he's uh Garcia just looked bad in the last second half of the half of the second round there and, and you know, he's getting cuts on his face, the nose, you know, his face is falling apart. And you're actually kind of worrying about him a little bit. And I gave that round 10-9 to Khan. In the third round there, there was a nice ebb and flow going back and forth. One fighter would start, you know, taking the lead in the round, but then the other fighter would win it back, and they're trading. The speed is obviously evident again. The body shots by Garcia are starting to land, you know, combos by Khan. And they keep trading back and forth. You know, again, uh, the body blow by Garcia, but these are low blows, you know. And the ref's warning him and everything. And for the first two minutes and 30 seconds of the round, Khan solidly controlled that round and was winning that round. And then there was a massive hook by Garcia, and down goes Khan. And Khan managed to get up and basically held on for his life, kind of, you know, there a little bit. Uh, tried to. Actually, he was just throwing punches in the wind. And for the last 10 seconds of the round. And that was a 10-8 round for Garcia. I mean, Khan was winning the round. He had it won right up until he got caught with the hook. And that's bad, because getting caught that late in the round, you don't know how much recovery time, what he's going to... I guess it depends on how you look at it. You know, well, it's, it's bad because most of his recovery time is just going to be spent staring staring off in a corner, looking at some stars and stuff. Hey! There's a big dipper. Anyway, or it could be good because he's actually going to get that minute of rest and not get punched in the head anymore. However you want to look at that. Going into the fourth round there, Garcia is really, you know, the foot's all the way down on the gas. And he's coming out, going to the throwing the hooks to the body, throwing the hooks, you know, to the head, obviously. Uh, you know, Khan goes down pretty pretty quick after a big right by uh, Garcia. You know, it's Garcia was pounding him, man. And, you know, and then it started to be a war. And they started going back and forth, you know, and there's left and then the body uh, shots by Garcia, the hooks, and they're trading and they're going back and forth and Khan goes down again. And at this point, uh, Kenny Bayless steps in and, you know, kind of just stops the fight. Khan never brought his hands up on any of his knockdowns. You know, there are a couple things they check for, you know, to make sure you're okay. They ask you, they're looking in your eyes. They might ask you questions like, what day is it today? Where are you fighting? You know, and things like that to get your, you know, and then they always tell you to lift your, you know, show them you're okay. Put, defend yourself. Put your hands up. And Khan's hands never lifted. You know, they were down at his side, you know, like pressed against his body. And in fact, Bayless, you know, would take his hands and, and wipe them off. So, you know, you, you're kind of worried about that when you start seeing that with Khan. Now, after the fight there, you're going and you're looking at Danny Garcia, and he's he's the champ, man. He's, uh, you know, you know, he's, he's a little... Uh, I don't know how, how you want to call it. He's he's still a little, not necessarily amateurish, but there's some things he needs to tie up, tighten up in his game, you know. And he's but he's still getting better. He's only 24. Uh, the WBC, he's the WBA, he's the ring champ. So he's got to clamor for the unification bout with uh, Juan Manuel. When you look in there, maybe uh, Brandon Rios if he can't get the uh, fight with Juan Manuel or you know, like Mike Alvarado. You know, so, we'll see how that goes. You can't deny his power. That's uh, one thing there. Um, very solid build. He might even move up to 147 after two or three fights. So, in there, excellent, excellent fight there for Danny Garcia there. And now going over to Khan, this was a massive loss. This was probably the worst case scenario that could really happen for him. To be in control of a fight... Basically, I have three rounds out of three in the bag, and to lose as badly as he did. And, you know, the chin will never, never go away. 
and after the Brutus Prescott thing and now this, uh, people are going to be gunning for him. You might see a different approach to him from now on. You might actually see people just bull rushing and trying to make him, you know, and go, go for the chin, try and take him out. Khan has heart. There's no doubt about that. Khan has, you know, that warrior instinct, but that could be to his detriment in the long run. A rematch with Peterson might be on the horizon there. Maybe uh, Mike Alvarado or one of those up-and-comers will want to take him on. Um, but he has to watch out, you know, now. You know, that's that's the biggest uh, biggest thing with him now is with that chin. You know, because it's not, it's not there. And when he went down with the initial fight uh, punch, he was hit in the throat. <laughs> that punch came in and caught him here, not here. It caught him here and went down and he was looped. So it's kind of worried. And when you look, he hasn't beat a top guy. When, when you're talking about the ratings, this guy was, Danny Garcia was, in a sense, like the highest rated fighter he's ever fought. So now it's so many questions you can't even begin to answer them with with, uh, with uh, Khan. They need to go back to the drawing board and duct tape that right hand upside his head and work from there. You know, that's what they need to start doing. And when you saw him, Khan get uh, leveled, he was throwing the left hook, his right hand dropped out of the frame. He was freakishly open for the shot. It was very... Uh, it wasn't uh, good boxing. You know, when he was doing that, you know, he was unloading, and he was uh, winding up, almost like a pitcher. And he got caught. He got caught after he landed his shot. You know what I mean? And he still didn't affect Garcia's power. So that was, that was a, you know, it was a rough fight to see happen. You feel happy for Danny Garcia, because he's only 24. He seems to be like a, a good kid. And, uh, We'll see how it goes from there. So, hey, please comment, rate, subscribe. Let me know what you think. This is a Big Ragu. And, and Guardo, man, Guardo's sad again. First Pacquiao, now Khan. He's beside himself. All right, well, we're out.